Let's take a look at another problem where we're going to find the area between two curves. All right, so this is at the bottom of page 636. And so we want to find the area of the shaded region marked R here that is bounded by y is equal to sine of pi x and y is equal to x cubed minus 4x. All right, so this is going to be a slightly yeah, it's going to be a problem. Why don't you pause the video and in pencil, see how far you can get through this. All right. Especially try and do it without your graphing calculator, actually. That, that might be a good, uh, a good trick for you. Um, you can use your graphing calculator to find out what the answer is, but see if you can do work that gets you to that answer. Because this is theoretically the kind of problem they could give you on the section where you don't get to use the calculator. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the technique we used um, at the top of the uh, this page. So this top curve is y is equal to sine of pi x, and the bottom curve is y is equal to x cubed minus 4x. So since this is the top curve and this is the bottom of the curve, we're going to subtract these two numbers. And so we want to calculate the definite integral of sine of pi x minus x cubed minus 4x dx, which is equal to, let me just change that to sine of pi x minus x cubed plus 4x dx. And what are the bounds of integration for this? We want to calculate between the whole curve. So we should look at these two points where they meet. And in this problem, it's pretty clear that they're 0 and 2 just from the context of looking at the graph. But one of the things we might find ourselves doing later is we might have to calculate what these intersection points are ourselves. Um, we'll see if there's a problem like that in our future. At any rate, Let's go ahead and find an antiderivative of this function here. All right, so what is the antiderivative of sine of pi x? Well, the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine, negative cosine of pi x. But it's a little bit more complicated than that because this isn't just the antiderivative of sine of x is negative cosine of x. But when we're multiplying this by pi, we got to kind of think about using the chain rule a little bit. Because the, the derivative of negative cosine of pi x would be sine of pi x times the derivative of this, which is pi. So that would be pi times sine of pi x. And so to account for that, we're going to multiply this by negative 1 over pi. And so the derivative of this is going to be sine of pi x. The negatives are going to cancel out times the derivative of pi x, which is pi. Those pi's in the numerator and denominator are going to cancel out, and you're going to be left with that. OK? So that's an important part about how to anti-differentiate complex functions like this. The antiderivative of x cubed should be a lot less hairy for you, I think. By this point, I hope you're recognizing that that's just 1 quarter times x to the fourth. And the antiderivative of 4x is going to be x squared. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And we're going to evaluate that from 0 to 2. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to plug 2 into this expression. So that's negative 1 over pi times cosine of 2 pi minus, oh, I did not give myself enough room here, minus 1 quarter times 2 to the fourth plus 2 times 2 squared. All right, and then we're going to subtract out all of this with 0 plugged in. All right, and so that's going to be negative 1 over pi times the cosine of 0. And then these two terms are going to disappear. 
uh, because those are both equal to zero when x is equal to zero. All right, so let's think about what these values are. And once again, I want to do this without using my calculator. Uh, so let's think about what the graph of cosine looks like. So cosine looks like this. All right. So this is zero. This is at pi over two. This is at pi. This is at three pi over two. And this is a two pi. So cosine of two pi is equal to one. So this is equal to negative one over pi minus two to the fourth power is 16. And one quarter of 16 is four. So that's gonna be minus four. 2 squared is equal to 4. 2 times 4 is equal to 8. And then over here, we've got the cosine of 0, which once again is equal to 1. So that's negative 1 over pi is all that's there. All right? And so this is still not too bad to simplify this. I've got a negative 1 over pi, and then I'm subtracting negative 1 over pi. So those are going to cancel each other out. And so all I've got is negative 4 plus 8, which is equal to positive 4. So this really odd looking shape right here turns out to have an area of 4, just the same, I suppose, as a square that's got a shape of 2. Um, that's not obvious from looking at that shape at all, but that's something that the calculus tells us, and so it must be true. All right, so that gives you an idea of how we can use the difference between two curves um, to find the area between two kind of zany looking shapes, just using antiderivatives that we already know about. All right, we'll handle more examples in the next video.